Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to uh, episode number 225 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, January 10th, uh, 2012. Nice to see you. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Hillary Rumble. Hello. Good to see you. Thank you. How it's you been? Good to be here. I Huge. Have... I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. Well, already. No. I'm just like, I'm so I, excited well, for you. And and why is that, Robbie? You know, I just, I'm just like, I'm wondering why you're... Congratulations are in order. Big time oh, congratulations. I'm getting married. Getting married. I'm getting here. married. Oh, pretty crazy. Awesome. It's pretty so wild the, stuff. So the question is, is he local? Like, he's not going to take you away from us? No, I'm not moving to, like, yes. China or anything crazy. Okay. I'll still be around. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Just with a different last name. There you go. So, yeah. We'll have to change all your footer graphics. <laughs> like, and now it's somebody else. Yep, there that. you go. So, yeah, that's my that's my big news. That's probably why I've been a little MIA lately. I've been. That's huge news. The night... <laughs> Well, I mean, you were scheduled to be here, what, two or three weeks ago? Yes, I and, was. Oh, I got something come up. <laughs> got something come up. Couldn't make it in. So uh, Eric Kidd filled in for you. And thank you, and, Eric, uh, for doing Yeah, that. fabulous for him to be able to fill in on such short notice. But So then I heard that you're getting married, and it's like, okay, good excuse. Good excuse. <laughs> well, thank you. Sorry, everyone. Yeah. I'm here now, though. I'm here. And it's good to see you. Thank you. It's yeah. good to be here. Good to be back. Excellent. So uh, now we've got a bit of a different setup tonight. So we're working with uh, quite a different setup. Those of you who are watching Backstage Pass, you know that uh, things are quite different here tonight. And it's nice to have you joining us. Uh, but uh, so we're, we're getting used to looking at different cameras know, and like, stuff. And so if I'm not making eye contact, <laughs> I'm doing my best. And, w- and we're realizing just before the show that, you know, we're yep. we're having to sit at different places on the <laughs> desk and stuff. Yeah. So it's uh, it's rather interesting. So as we grow here at Category 5, uh, it's a learning experience. Oh, so, for sure. Very cool. Always stuff. moving and shaking here. And I tell you. This is our first night with these new stands mm-hmm. and everything. So yeah, yeah. Let cool. us know what you think. Let us know. <laughs> and this show is going to be awesome. Firstly, I agree. Secondly, best show in a long time. Well, you know, it is what it is. Mm. You know, and that's all I can say about that. But. Part of the reason why it's going to be such a rockin' show is because there is tons coming up in the newsroom you do not want to miss. For instance, crystals from space show that quasi-crystals can indeed form in nature, just not on Earth. Ubuntu TV has been unveiled at CES. Ubuntu TV? Ubuntu TV. How interesting. I want to hear about that. We shall see. Mm. And could the first step to interstellar travel be near? (gasps) You're just going to have to stick around and see. Additionally, Samsung is creating future-ready smart TVs. And lastly, LEI is promoting their eco-friendly products at CES 2012. Very cool. Stick around because these stories are coming up later in the show. It's nice that they're getting that kind of exposure uh, Mm. with eco-alkalines and the official battery (laughs) of Category 5 TV. Of course. Fantastic uh, (laughs) place for them to be. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Greetings to people in the chat room. Popey, great to see you. Ooh. Agamotto, <laughs> Hubba Bubba, and uh, John. We've and got lots of more. tons of people joining us oh, in the chat yeah. room. There. I want to thank uh, those of you who have sent in your viewer postcards. We're starting to get a fairly good accumulation of them, and I'm and I'm starting to consider, you know, do we do we. I think that'd Tape be cool. them up to the brick wall. It'd be cool. What do we do? So. Well, look at this bad boy. Hey, look at this. Ha ha. Coming to us from Spain. Very cool. It reads, hi, Robbie and friends. Thank you for Category 5 TV. You make it look easy. This is a card from Spain. Keep up the good work and all the best from Spain from Gordon. Gordon, cheers. So thank you for sending us this groovy postcard. Yeah, check this out. Um, it was written in English, not in Spanish, if, yeah. in case you're wondering. Oh, did, did you translate that I'm fast? A, uh, Here it is, among backstage Among my many um, skills, I'm also fluent in Spanish. Yeah. I wish. Speaking of skills, no. people people have mentioned, you know, wouldn't it be cool to have like a a, a visual interpreter on the show? So like oh. that, you, that you can do that. Well, you hello. you have yeah. 
<laughs> you have friends, probably perhaps that are watching the mm -hmm, show, mm -hmm. uh, even right now that that uh, are hearing impaired. Yes, yes, I do. And I find that very interesting. I and I hope that uh, that you find that I'm easy to read. Um, but how is the experience as far as watching web TV? for uh, somebody who, who's uh, observing like lip reading? Or yeah, yeah. I think a lot of it depends on um, like the continuous stream. Like I know like if it were to glitch and be like, yeah, that'd that be would tough. be difficult. Um, for lip reading in general, you're probably easy to read your lips because you don't have a mustache hanging down, covering them. You articulate clearly. Not you, not pointing any fingers at <laughs> any particular co-host. I'm just saying. It's definitely no. not you. It's definitely not uh, Krista or Rachel. Um, oh, who's uh, that other one? Uh, um, uh, we'll anyways, it out but on. no, okay, no, seriously, in all seriousness, with lip reading in general, Typically, if you don't have facial hair covering the mouth, it right. makes it easier to read. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I guess depending on their background, I know that um, my one friend, she can identify when somebody has an accent comparable oh, to really? a Canadian accent. For instance, a British accent. She can identify because she has a harder time um, So if I was yeah. to talk like this... It might be... You would understand that I am speaking with the French accent? Perhaps. May we... But um, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, interesting things like That's that. That's really so intriguing. They can, yeah. lip reading is definitely a very intense acquired skill, but hmm. um, some things make it easier or more difficult. Cool. So yeah. Very cool. Now you're I, all a little bit smarter. I, well, I wonder where technology is gonna <laughs> take um, you know, TV, mm -hmm. as, as you're mentioning there, the, it seems like CES is just all about these smart TVs right now. Yep. But that is going to mean more and more web broadcasts, more and more oh, yeah. uh, online content and cloud-based content. So I'm, I'm uh, curious as to where that's going to take things as far as accessibility. <laughs> if, if you are an accessibility user, I'd be interested in even hearing from you mm -hmm. uh, with regards to uh, how the experience at Category 5 is uh, for you. And uh, we definitely want to make it as easy as possible. If that means Eric needs to shave... Then uh, you know, I'll, I'll have that chat with him. At least get a little trim. I don't <laughs> Just know. <laughs> trim around the mouth so <laughs> that you can at least see well, his lips. Yeah, that's the yeah. important part. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah, interesting stuff. Very cool. Mm -hmm. We are uh, excited that uh, it's shorty time again. Shorty. The Shorty Awards, the fourth annual, are uh, taking place. And uh, you can nominate us. Just visit cat5.tv slash mm -hmm. shorty. And I'm glad we captured that URL for the Shorty Awards before it got taken for some kind of hip-hop track or something. <laughs> Shorty. Shorty! <laughs> <laughs> Mobile.cat5.tv if you've got a mobile device. Check that out. Do it. Scan the code. Ooh. And that will take you right oh, to our... Yeah. I'll help you hold it up. Here. <laughs> mobile.cat5.tv if you've got a mobile device mm -hmm. and that can be a tablet a, uh, a smartphone whatever you've got uh, it's going to give you our, our mobile ready website very easy to use with touch screen uh, you'll definitely want to check that out and we've got live.cat5.tv is our new page for actually watching the show that gets you away oh, from our main okay. website. Because what happens is sometimes, you know, during a live show there's so much traffic on our website during that live one hour that it's it's a lot of bandwidth to be mm -hmm. pushing out of the server, oh, so yeah. people get slow response time from the server during that time, things like that. So we created a very basic, lightweight page at live.cat5.tv. Should load very, very quickly for you, very reliably, and gets you away from that problem of having 10,000 people trying to load the same site at the same time. So, very cool. All right. We've got lots of viewer testimonials coming up as well tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got um, some exciting stuff. I'm going to be showing you how to use free GNU image manipulation program, the GIMP. Uh, we're going to be showing you how to use that to change your photo background. It's kind of a more advanced tutorial. You're going to want to stick around. Uh, we're going to be able to do some really cool effects. So stick around for that. We'll be right back after this. They're hitting the road or the dusty trails. Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point of view HD video camera built directly into a high quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high definition video with a high quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com
This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online at www.category5.tv. We're going to look at viewer testimonials down to about Christmas, okay. I think, because yeah. uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we've looked at them, mm -hmm. and uh, we certainly appreciate it when our viewers send in a viewer testimonial. It's uh, another way for you to let us know that, uh, that you appreciate the show and uh, what you're really enjoying about that. So lots of them have come in Which uh, is over great. the past little while. So we I'll kind of hearing yeah. from you we love it yeah um joshua writes to us saying category five is amazing there's Cheers. always stuff to learn and there are funny things too like that guy that visited on episode 222 hmm. <laughs> i can't remember the name of him right now but you should have him on more often of course there are many more funny things as well and i'm not putting um that down of course um, oh, and I and I know that with this testimonial, I'm sure to win yet another pogo plug. There's <laughs> always something to gain on Category Five. So oh, thank you, John. Josh, for that. Yeah, thanks, man. Planet Calypso. Um, yeah, thanks for sending us that in. I'll let you uh, hit another one there. Oh, okay, I'm yeah, sure. Up here. This one is coming to us from Norway from Jan, saying, "Hi, Robbie. Yeah. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you for a great show." The first time I tried Ubuntu, I felt lost. I have tried another Linux based um, on KDE, and I like the I like the old ones. But when they changed it, I think that they made it worse. Then I discovered oh. your show, and I started to watch it. At first, I thought Ubuntu was not the thing for me, but after watching your show for a while, I felt that I learned so much, and I might as well install it. Now I recommend Ubuntu to other people. You have shown me so many great software. Um, techniques to use with Ubuntu. Thank you so much for the Pogo plug I won for the first awesome. time when I joined the live chat. I will recommend um, to others to join this live chat because they too can win great prizes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Jan, thank you very much for the Pretty testimonial. Cool. I've got one here from Paul who writes, I find Category 5 to be the perfect mix of information and entertainment. Your show is truly a pleasure to watch and much appreciated. Uh, thanks from Paul. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, got another one here from Dennis Kelly from Michigan. Hey, Dennis. Saying, this show rocks. I look forward to the show every week. Robbie gives great instructions on how to do very interesting things with computers. Thank Cheers. you for all that you do, and thank you for your crew of co-hosts. Awesome show from Dennis. <laughs> Those co-hosts are awesome. Yeah. I have to admit. They're yeah. pretty good. Yeah, They're yeah. pretty good. Uh, this one comes to us from Robert Gerzinski from Melbourne, Australia, who says, Great show. Love the fact that it deals mainly with Linux. I would like to thank you for helping me out with a few of the problems that I've had recently uh, answering my, my questions on the show. I've been able to watch the live broadcast for the first time on December 27th. Keep up the great work. Thanks from Robert. More greetings sent our way from Leland saying, you have answered so many questions from each family or each of my family members. Your huh. show promotes personal computing confidence. Carry on. Very Thanks, cool. Leland. A couple more. Robert Reed from Aurora says, watching for off and on uh, for some time now. Uh, in fact, from BC, they call it, which is uh, in brackets, before Carrie. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> Very cool. So that uh, that takes us back. Carrie Webb was uh, my first co-host back in uh, season one. So you're going way back. Uh, we're in season five right now. Uh, Robert goes on to say, I've been using Linux for some time, starting with Red Hat 4, but now I'm using Ubuntu. I'm testing Ubuntu 12.04 Alpha now and trying Bash programming as well. That comes to us from Robert. Thanks for the uh, viewer testimonial. Cool. And lastly, coming to us from East Afghanistan, which is pretty wild. Very cool. From Philip. Um, hi, Robbie, cast and Category 5 community. Hey, Philip. Y'all are amazing. I've been watching hmm. on and off since 2007 when I was first introduced to Ubuntu. I love seeing how much Category 5 has grown and changed for the better. I'm from Austin, Texas, but I'm currently serving in Afghanistan. Don't worry. Hmm. I plan on sending a postcard. Ah, we, will, cheers. we will look out for that. Mm -hmm. And with the help of Category 5, I've been introducing Ubuntu to my fellow soldiers, two of which have ditched Windows and now are on to 11.10. Ah, now we're talking. <laughs> we watch the show via RSS when we can. Not often enough, as it takes an overnight download session to download one episode due to the horrendous satellite internet we have. Oh. Overall, we just want to say thank you and keep up the good work. Coming to us from SPC, Grigo Phillip, and the soldiers of the 236th Engineer Company and the Texas Army National Guard. Oh, thank cheers. you for that. That's great. Thank you for the uh, viewer testimonial specialist. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of getting the show via RSS and understanding that, okay, yeah, you'd, you'd have some pretty serious trouble getting the yeah. show uh, certainly live yeah, and, yeah. and trying to get it uh, quickly 
via RSS. I'm going to actually jump over to our RSS feeds. It's uh, cat5.tv slash RSS. And uh, when I'm there, let's take a look here. You'll see that there there are a few different uh, RSS feeds that are available to your specialist. And MP4 is probably going to be a smaller file than SD or certainly HD. HD is typically going to come in, uh, it's uh, 480, uh, yeah, 720p actually, uh, the HD feed. So that one's coming in about a gigabyte per episode. SD is coming in a little bit uh, lower than that. We can actually find out how small that's coming in. Quick little way, let's see this file here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go into my terminal and just jump over to temp. And I'm going to wget that file, and I'll see that that file, look at that, is only 321 megs, right? So that's not so bad for a, for a one-hour show. So that feed there is SD H.264. Comparatively, let's look at the portable MP4, which is the lowest quality that we offer. I'm going to grab that same episode, and we're going to wget that. And you'll see that one is a little bit smaller, 251 megs. So it is indeed the smallest feed as far as size goes. So if you're looking to just get the show as quickly as possible, uh, I wonder if perhaps updating to a different feed might expedite the, the uh, arrival of those files for you. Perhaps. Here's hoping. So just a little <laughs> tip for you. Using our RSS feeds are, are great because you can subscribe with any aggregator. If you're using iTunes, you can go to cat5.tv slash iTunes. Uh, if you're using Miro Internet TV, you'll find us there. Or, of course, any aggregator at all, just go to cat5.tv slash RSS. And that's going to actually get the current episode of Category 5 every time it's released. Cool. So like this episode that's going forth live tonight mm -hmm. on a Tuesday night is going to be available in all of our RSS feeds by Wednesday afternoon. Oh, so okay. next day. Right on. It's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. But just to reiterate, it looks like the <laughs> MP4 feed is, uh, is the smallest feed. Hmm. We also offer an MP3 feed. Did you know we were available in audio only? Oh. Super small, like 40, 50 well, megs, I think, cool. or 70 megs. I don't know. So you can put it on your... Yeah, you can uh, just kind of listen. Yeah. Because I have that sweet, soothing voice. I'm going to have to start talking like that for those who are listening on MP3. <laughs> like, you're watching. I mean, you're listening. You're listening. To Category 5 <laughs> T uh, Radio. <laughs> Good hmm. work. I was referring to it. Very cool uh, to receive that testimonial. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sending that our way. And also, thank you for sending your questions our way. In fact, we have a question right here. Wonderful. Are you ready? Are you ready to rock? Ready. Are you all ready to learn? Yeehaw. I'd like to learn something, please. Okay, dokie. This comes to us from Franklin saying... Yeah, um, I saw the show 222 live and you all rocked. I'm glad you enjoyed awesome. the music I sent you. I was in the chat room, but I did not know how to speak. I did not. Oh, oh maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I shall a your. Oh, I will, shall answer your question with a question. This email is laden with riddles and things. Riddles. Okay. Um, how am I to catch the horizon? Cheers from Franklin. I must have missed this episode. I don't know what's going on in this question. 222 is when we were learning to install PyTile. Mm, yeah, I um, missed that one. Krista was here. and uh, But what what caught my attention there is that Franklin was having trouble using the chat room. Okay. So it almost seems like I feel like I need to kind of address that. Okay, sure. If I may. And Franklin, I'll it. just give you a quick little rundown. On our website, category5.tv, there's that. Or there's also cat, uh, live cat5.tv if you're in firefox you'll be able to oh this is going to cause some cool video feedback Ooh, Ooh, if, you're, my if you're in firefox you can go uh, show chat and it'll do it um, here i can't because i'm in chrome and it's not compatible unfortunately just yet we're just developing that but on the main website during a live show you've got the chat room here and all the time you've got interact chat room and when you click on that you're going to be able to sign in so you got that far that's no problem i'm just going to leave it as guest Fill in this form here. Angelos es Stuida. Okay, connect. 
here we go and we're into the chat room so here's here's what you need to do franklin you'll see here's here's all the people that are chatting away okay hey jot so now if i go way down to the bottom here right there there's a cursor and i can so say well hello there and hit enter and that actually puts my message right in the chat room Okay. So that's pretty straightforward. It's it's nice and lightweight. It's browser based. So this allows you to participate in the chat room without having to set up any application on your computer from any computer from anywhere in the world. So very cool stuff. Uh, but um, that's you you you, you want to be able to type right. So just down right at the bottom there. Cool. Hmm. There you have it. So wait, what did he mean by? How am I to catch the horizon? Is that what he meant? How I don't know. Think? That's some kind of riddle, I guess. It's just like, wow. We don't control Poetic. the weather. Or the, the tides. Here. Contrary to popular opinion. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for your question, Franklin. Thank you so much, Franklin. <laughs> and we hope to see you in the chat room soon. Yes, Very and soon. hear from you in the chat room. <laughs> with, no excuses with now. audible typing. Yes. <laughs> Okie doke. Well, I got another question here coming cool. to us from Robert saying, hey Robert. going back to some web development, I've been currently working on a site with a friend and we would like to incorporate into the Joomla base site, a Facebook like box um, like okay. you have on your site. We would like to know how to hmm. incorporate this into the site code and roughly how to work out where to place it within the page. Oh, okay. Kind regards from Robert. There's our Facebook. So this is what he's referring mm -hmm. to with the like button and the information that's posted on our wall. So this is actually, what's neat about um, about Joomla or any contact management, or content management mm -hmm. system, I should say, um, is that there, when there's a community, when it's open source like Joomla, there are tons of available plugins, modules, and all these things, they're called extensions in Joomla's case, that are available for you and quite often free of charge. And what you're actually looking at there is one of these modules that's available for free. So just knowing where to get that is is what's important. So what we're going to do is we're going to go extensions.joomla.org. It's the website, okay? And you can browse through this. It's a huge repository of various things that are available for your Joomla site. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm actually going to search because I'm going to tell you the top secret name of our uh, ITP Facebook, no space, all right? Like box. Try to say that 10 times fast. ITP Facebook like box. Enter. And you will see. There it is. Compatible with 1.5 native, 1.6, and 1.7. Okay. Click on that. And you'll see here's the first thing that I check is whether I need to pay for it or not. This one is non commercial. That means it's free, it's licensed under the GPL. Okay. So here, you can see a demo. You can download the uh, the module, and you're good to go. Okay. So now, as far as placing that within your actual Joomla website, we need to know your module positions, right? So I'll show you a little trick if you've got Joomla 1.5.x or under, uh, and certainly even some of the uh, newer Joomla, uh, depending on your template. But most templates do have this. If you go up to your website address, okay? Just go question mark TP equals one and hit enter. And I remember that by remembering toilet paper. <laughs> Whatever works. Whatever helps you Whatever remember. works. And what's going to happen here is it's converting my, my template over into uh, module display mode so that I can actually see my module positions. Just taking a moment to load, but uh, and this is exactly the scene. This <laughs> there we go. That's why we created live.cat5.tv. <laughs> it will load, but we get a an error if there's too many people all at once. So if you're having trouble getting onto the chat room and things, go over to live.cat5.tv. Check it out. And that raises the whole issue of why we're moving away from Joomla because of the heavy weight nature of the system when you've got <laughs> tens of thousands of people accessing it all at once. It's, yeah. It becomes impossible. So, let's see if I can get one. But that is going to be your 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 get command. Just question mark tp equals one, and that will uh, that will show you your module positions. Um, so you could, that's that's so you know whether it's going to go on the left area, if it's going to go on the right. Mm. I wish I could show you. 
Let's give it one last try. Give it a whirl. Come one on. last try. Come on, work. Come on, work. The anticipation. The anticipation. <laughs> Sight's loading. That's, there it is. It's coming. It's coming. It's going. We're good. We're golden. Yeah. Oh, access denied. Just, All right, but you get the just idea. Just kidding. TP question mark one uh, or question mark TP equals one. Okay, that's going to show you. It's going to create a red box and it's going to give you the title of that module position. <laughs> All right. And then when you create the module, you'll place it in that position, and you'll be good. Cool. Cheers. Well, thank Sorry you for that question. Trouble there, yeah. Thank it's you. All good. And I think we got we got time for another question. I'd say. All right. Yeah. This is coming to us from John, a.k.a. Lone Star. Hey, John. Hi, Robbie. Trying to get Synergy running, but for some reason, I can't. Can you tell? Oh, he sent a screenshot. Can you tell from the screenshot what I'm doing? I'm doing everything you suggest in your tutorial, but doesn't seem oh, yeah? to be having much luck. So he sent us a screenshot here. Okay. I'm going to see if I can and, pull that um, up. The, yeah, the screenshot here. I can't really figure out what's going on, but okay. I know someone who will know. Well, and that hopefully. is Robbie. Let's take a boot. So, <laughs> so we shall see. But thank you for sending us the screenshot because that is helpful rather than just words. Visual. <laughs> it's a visual pictorial word representation. Just as I'm loading that, Rob Gore wants to give a shout out to Garby. Uh, says that uh, oh, Garby was very helpful in the uh, nice. in the chat room the other day getting him set up with his camera so very cool it's always uh it's wonderful to see that our community um you know hangs out in the chat room and helps each other out and even through the week when i'm unavailable yeah. they're they're no, still participating in uh in the show which is mm -hmm. very very cool so let's take a look at uh what's actually going on here it, and and unfortunately see this is not going to give me enough to go on because this is quick synergy right so You've created your screens, and I see that you've got three screens set up. Those are basically computers. One of them's an IP address. The other two use uh, like a, a, either a host name or just an alias. So really tough for me to see without knowing, you know, if you've got the IPs working and, and what the actual problem is that you're having. From what I can tell, okay, so John 1 PC is right of chief. Chief is left of John 1 PC. I would change the C on Chief to lowercase, just in case. Um, I'm not sure if that's the actual host name or what uh, what you're using. Um, and IP address is always a good idea as well. I, I always use IP addresses only uh, for my Synergy setup, just so that if, for some reason, the host name's not resolving internally, then it will still work. Chief is left of John 1 PC, so that looks fine. Um, as long as that's the orientation, but I would change chief to lowercase and I'd like to see the other screens like if you highlight chief and hit edit I'd like to see what you see there and also know a little bit more about uh, about the symptom as to what's what's actually happening Okay, sorry. I can't be of much more help with that um, Well, and the only other thing to consider like see I'd want to know also like um, the computer that I'm looking at in the screenshot, is that Chief or is that John 1 PC? Oh. And mm -hmm. in that case, is it running as server or client and vice versa on, uh, on the other computer? So it's just making sure that everything's set up. So one of them has to be the server, configured as the server. One of them has to be the client. If your client is Linux, it's real easy because you can just, you can set up the, uh, let's say Windows, you use Synergy. Sorry, I said quick Synergy. That was Synergy on Windows uh, 7. Um, if, you, if you use Synergy to set up the server end and then you run it on your Windows computer, then on your Linux computer, you can just go Synergy C for client space and then the IP address of your, uh, of your Windows machine. And that will give you a connection, and at least then you can you can look at the uh, you can bring up the the status window and see what's going on if it's trying to connect or whatever. Also, on Windows 7, there are some pretty strict firewall rules. You might try just as an experiment. Don't leave it this way. Turn off your firewall entirely. Try to run Synergy and get your connections, and then if it works, you know that it's a firewall issue, and you need to tweak your firewall. Don't leave it, don't necessarily leave it off because I want you to be protected, but that's just a way to test just to see if that's part of what's causing the problem for you hmm. okay good luck please let me know and uh we'd love to hear from you and know uh if if you're able to get synergy going i mm -hmm. i 
I, I really the synergy is such a tough thing because it's it's so different from every single computer to computer to computer. Mm -hmm. But once you really get into it and you really understand how it works, um, it's it's not problematic at all. And it's actually quite an amazing piece of software. Synergy is what allows me, if you're watching Backstage Pass, this computer here is the broadcast system. This computer here is my on-air demo system. Everything that you see on air happens on this computer. Uh, and if you're on Backstage Pass, again, you can see this. This one here is Windows 7 running the stream. And this one here is uh, Zorin OS, which is a, a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu. Hmm. So those two are, of course, sharing the same keyboard and mouse so that I don't have to use two keyboards yeah, and mouse, yeah, mice, that's, right? Yeah. You can see the keyboard <laughs> for this computer is actually kind of pushed back there, and the mouse is way back there. I can't even reach it, and it's, it's not necessary because Synergy lets me do all that. That's so cool. it's a really cool piece of software. Yeah, totally. But you got to get it, get it working, right? Yeah, got to get her hooked so, up. Got to get it going. <laughs> it's important. Totally. All right. Well, it is uh, half past, and uh, we've got lots of news stories, I know, so I'll let you take it away. Okay, dope. Here are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Examples of a crystal previously thought to be impossible in nature may have come from space, a study shows. Quasi-crystals have an unusual structure, in between those of crystals and glasses. Until two years ago, quasi-crystal... That's a tongue twister. Quasi-crystals had only been created in the lab. Then geologists found them in rocks from Russia's quarry... Koryak Mountains. In PNA's P PNAS, sorry, my reading today, my goodness. In PNAS Journal, a team says the chemistry of the Russian crystal suggests they arrived in meteorites. Quasi crystals break some of the rules of symmetry that apply to conventional crystalline structures. They also exhibit different physical and electrical properties. A team of researchers report, our evidence indicates that quasi-crystals can form naturally under astrophysical conditions and remain stable over cosmic time scales. Canonical has given the first demonstration of Ubuntu TV, the latest piece of the company's strategy of shifting the Linux-based OS away from its traditional focus on desktop computing. Hmm. At this stage, Canonical's TV for human beings is mostly an aspiration to see if manufacturers incorporate the software as a part of their smart television developments to bind together TV, PVR, cloud, and content streamed from the internet, and smartphones all under one interface. Creating a device able to cope with these demands is easier than it sounds. Because it turns TV into full-fledged computers, the software complexity steps up, steps up a level from anything in use today where vendors simply do their best, and usually fail, to integrate proprietary technology. Hmm. The company will offer TV makers a vanilla version of the Unity interface and its forthcoming Ubuntu 12.04 that vendors can then adjust to reflect the underlying hardware as needed. And why would they be interested in all? Well, because Ubuntu is ready to roll right now and will be um, open to all rather than just one vendor seeking competitive advantage. Oh, well, that's cool. In Canonical's view, that sort of proprietary approach is restricting in the longer term. Canonical's John Bernard blogged that Ubuntu TV is a vision of how TV will work in the future with no cables, no boxes, no hassles. The goal is to uncomplicate television for the average viewer while delivering um, to him or her all the services and options that they're becoming used to. Hmm. Whether manufacturers or users will be interested in these while larger rivals like Google, Apple, and Microsoft have their own internet TV ambitions remain to be seen. Very cool. Yes. I love that this is putting Linux at the forefront of that device. Oh yeah, awesome. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Pentagon's premier research agency has chosen a former astronaut to lead a foundation that is designed to take humanity to the stars. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, and NASA are sponsoring the project known as the 100-Year Starship. Very cool. Yeah. And I must add that apparently it is sponsored by Tetris. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> May Jemison, the first African-American woman to go into space, was notified last week that she had won, according to a copy of the DARPA letter obtained by the BBC. Since leaving NASA, Jemison has been involved in science education programs and is known as a space travel enthusiast and a longtime Star Trek fan. Mm -hmm. 
The goal is not to have the government fund the actual building of the spacecraft de uh, destined for the stars, but rather to create a foundation that can last 100 years in order to help foster the research needed for interstellar travel. Yes. And smart TVs seem to be the highlight at CES this year. So now that TVs are becoming more like computers, what happens when the internal components become obsolete? Well, Samsung thinks they have the answer, revealing their new smart internet connected television that has the ability to have its hardware upgraded every year. It has an expansion slot allowing a new kit to be added to boost processing performance and introduce new features. Hey now. The innovation may help reassure shoppers concerned about their screen becoming outdated. In addition to its smart evolution capability, Samsung has also added gesture, voice, and face recognition features to the ES8000 model. Samsung's president of Consumer Electronics unveiled their flagship LED television at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, noting that his firm currently sells two televisions every second. It's big biz. Wow. And a team from LEI Electronics Inc. have made their way to the Consumer Electronics Show again this year with a focus on their eco-alkalines batteries as well as their other environmentally conscious products that they're carrying in 2012. Their front-runner eco-alkalines are the world's first certified carbon-neutral alkaline battery. LEI also introduces the entire line of free play radios and flashlights, which are powered by human and solar energy. LEI will also be promoting their 100% compostable bags called Bag to Nature. If you're visiting CES this week, make sure you say hello to LEI Electronics Inc. in the Sustainable Planet section. For more information about their environmentally friendly products and their full line of awesome tech gadgets, visit cat5.tv slash LEI. You can get these full stories online at our website at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from our awesome, stellar community of viewers. If you have a story you think is worthy of on-air mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hilary Rumble. Thanks, Hillary. No Tonight's episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by GardengateFarms.com. For certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice, visit them at GardengateFarms.com. Also, Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. You can download the free massive multiplayer online role-playing game at cat5.tv slash Calypso. And Pogoplug at cat5.tv slash Pogoplug. You visit that website, you'll get your free 5 gigabyte personal cloud. Check them out, cat5.tv slash Pogoplug. Also, some fantastic hardware that they, uh, that they make. So Cool. Cool stuff. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online at www.category5.tv. Nice to see you. Uh-huh. Thanks lots of people, for being Yeah, here. lots of people joining us in the chat room tonight. <laughs> I see lots of familiar faces, uh, lots of guests joining us in the chat room. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll leave it to the chat room to let them know, hey, you can actually assign your own name if you like. Oh, and yeah. Then people know who you are. So you're not just a random number. Like... <laughs> Uh, I don't know, 47988. If you get the reference, then I will give you 50 viewer points. All right. Don't Google it. No Googling I just allowed. thought of a random number, or did I? You either know it or you don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Invincible Mutant, good to see ya. Oh, I'm signed off. I'm just me in the chat room. Hey, so we've got, uh, now we were talking about uh, our viewer postcards yeah. that are being received. We've so got, cool, so, yeah, so cool. We've got a growing selection. I've I got tons that. over here. Awesome. And I would just encourage you to send in your viewer postcards. It's easy to do. Just grab a postcard uh, of your local city or at least somewhere that's nearby you and uh, mail that to Category 5 Technology TV, Postal Box 29009 in Barrie, Ontario, Canada, L4N7W7. And we'll give you 100 viewer points in order to, uh, for you to do that. Um, and we want to uh, receive that from you soon. So send in your postcards. Do that it. would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Cool. Tonight, we've got uh, a really cool feature. We're going to be looking at GNU Image Manipulation <laughs> Program. I love it when we look at tools like GNU Image Manipulation mm -hmm. Program, a.k.a. GIMP. And uh, it's just it's so fabulous when you realize that there are free tools out there that are com uh, competitive with very expensive commercial applications. Yes, yes. Give you the feature set that uh, that you need in order to do <laughs> some really cool 
photo manipulations. So GIMP is, of course, available at GIMP.org, and it is a free download for Windows, Mac, or Linux. So you're not limited to, you know, you're seeing me using Linux today, um, but if you are on Windows, go to the very bottom. You'll see downloads for Unix, which is Linux, or uh, I shouldn't say that, Unix slash Linux, mm -hmm. uh, Windows, or Mac OS X. So if you're on Windows, you can choose that. If you're on uh, Unix or Linux, you can choose that, or just get it from your repositories, even easier, if it didn't already come with your, your distribution. So what we're going to do tonight, here's, here's the scenario. Took my son in, and, and we had a, a little portrait session. And I thought, oh, it'd be so nice to get some, some cutesy photos of yeah, the kids this of year for Christmas. And Why not? And it's great, but he just got the cutest little picture. Aww. There he is for his Christmas shot for this year. Love it. I love the picture. I'd love for it to be on my desk at all times. But the problem is, it's, it's got that big old Christmas tree in the background. And here we are. It's oh, January yes. 10th. And what do we do with a photo that has a big old Christmas tree in the background? So I thought, well, here's an opportunity to show you how we can use free <laughs> software. And we're going to do this live on the air. I think we've got uh, almost enough time I th we can to do, do this. We can yeah. Do and all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that image in, in uh, here I am in, in Linux. If you're on Windows, you can you can do that as well. I'm not sure about Mac. You probably have to do a key combination of Mac key slash double, triple click the single mouse button. <laughs> you have. Whatever. <laughs> We're going to load the picture into GIMP. And there we go. Okay? So I've got this great picture of my son, but again, it's got that Christmas tree. Okay? Then what I did, or what I would do, is I'd bring up Creative Commons search engine. That's search.creativecommons.org. And you can do a search here for things that are licensed under Creative Commons. So what I would do is I would go Park Bench, and I'm going to search Flickr because I know that those are images. And because it's a Creative Commons search, that, of course, is the licensing that Category 5 is licensed mm -hmm. under, uh, Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. It means, basically, that the, the people who own the copyrights to these documents, mm -hmm. to these images, they're saying, you know what, it's okay if you use these as long as you give attribution. If you say that, hey, this was actually Category 5 TV that originated this content or whoever owns the photos. Right. So you can go through here and, and you can pick a photo. So what I'm thinking is taking this photo and, and noticing that the camera is in fact kind of looking down on mm -hmm. him a little bit. Yeah. So we need, we don't want a straight on shot of a bench. We want one that's kind of slanted a little bit so that we can make it look realistic that he's actually sitting on that bench. Mm -hmm. So with my simple search for park bench, you know, like this one here, as nice of a picture as that is, it would not work because it's too straight on. We need one with a little bit more of an oh, angle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, of course, attribution born 1945. Okay. Just because I brought it up. <laughs> Everyone else, you, you know that my heart is in it. And if I don't mention you, it's okay. But you, maybe people will find you anyways. <laughs> From the search. Because they're going to do the same exactly. search. Right? Exactly. Okay. So I'm browsing through. And you can see that there's tons of different angles here. This is like the, the opposite of using like iStock where we're not use, we're not looking for stock images that we can necessarily you know that we can buy. We're looking for images that we can use here free of charge, without royalty, as long as we attribute them to the original artist who took the photo. Right? So you can keep scrolling through until you find one that you really like. You can refine your search if you like. There's a nice one. You know, it's kind of cool. Hmm. That one uh, from Matt from London. That was a lovely photo, Matt from London. Very nice. This one I like because it doesn't have the text on the back of the mm -hmm. bench. And I do like the water kind of thing in the Ooh. background. This one uh, is from Ben Hussman. Okay. And you'll notice... Now, I'm going to right-click on this, and it goes, this photo has some rights reserved. I'm going to click on that, and you'll see you are free to share, to remix, to adapt, to make commercial use of the work under the following condition that you attribute. You must attribute the work in the manner specified by the author, uh, etc. Okay, so that's basic Creative Commons attribution, or this is uh, attribution 2.0, generic. Okay, so Ben Hussman, 
check out the uh, the link there if you want to check out some of his photos. How's that for attribution, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm going to right-click on that. I'm going to choose View All Sizes. We want to go Original Size. And we're going to get that great, big, massive original image, which is 3735 by 2490. I'm going to copy that image URL. And then I'm going to go back to the GIMP. I'm going to right-click on my image. I'm going to go File, Open Location, and paste that URL and hit Open. And it's going to actually download that directly to the GIMP mm. without any interim having to save it to my computer. Okay, so now I've got that image. I'm going to highlight my son with Control A, Control C for copy, and then paste him into there. And he's good. Now I've got a floating selection layer. I want to right click on him and go Layer, New Layer. And now I've got a layer there and a layer there. I'm going to click on this cool tool up here that allows me to scale the image. And I'm going to highlight the pasted layer, the top layer there, which is my sun. And I want to scale this by clicking on the scale tool. I want to set it proportional by using the chain link so that now if I scale down one proportion, you know, width or height, it's going to scale down the other one accordingly. So now if I drag that, it's going to allow me to mm -hmm. scale it down. So I'll scale that, see how, how that looks. Okay, move the picture onto the bench. And he's <laughs> massively huge for that bench. <laughs> okay, so keep scaling. Okay. And we can be more precise than this. We can use other factors. I could uh, use reference points and things to see that I'm being accurate. You can see that the, the actual shape of the bench is fairly accurate to what he's sitting on. Mm -hmm. yeah, so this is, I think this, this photo is going to work very, very well for this. Yeah, good proportions. Mm -hmm. So now using the GIMP, here's what I want to do. I've clicked on this free select tool. I call it the lasso just because it, it looks like one. And I'm going to use the plus, so my shift button and my plus key to get a really nice zoom on that image. This is where the GIMP is going to stand out way above Photoshop is when you're doing something like this. I'm going to pick a point like this on his hair and look at Okay, now I've got this thing. And I can keep clicking on point. Yeah. Okay, here's where Photoshop fails us. Watch what I can do. Photoshop users, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to take this, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to move. Look at that. Magic. See? So now what I'm doing is I'm getting just a little bit inside of his hair so that I'm completely cropping out the Christmas tree. I'm putting a, a basically a border around my son's head. Okay. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse in order to move up and down. I had that one out a little bit so I can actually click on the circle and move it in. Okay. When you get good at this, I'm just using my mouse. You can, you can move along pretty quick. Watch what I can do. So I'm clicking on points to get that in as tight as possible without cutting off any of him, but certainly by getting around. You know, I want to get that tree completely yeah. out of there. Okay. Sometimes you'll, you'll be able to do longer ones like that. When there's a lot of curves, you want it to be fairly short because it's going to give you a better smooth edge for rounding, basically. Okay. So I'm going to keep going around him. Here we are. Questions, comments in the chat room? Of course, we welcome them. Lots of dialogue about uh, Photoshop versus GIMP. Yeah, I'll possibly get that. with um, some of our chat room mm -hmm. regulars and possibly with some other co-hosts debating oh, yeah? the uh, <laughs> exceptional <laughs> debating the uh, efficacy of these tools. Um, Rachel X, who possibly <laughs> could be um, related could in be. the sense of a co-host herself, is saying that Photoshop users know there are better ways than the lasso tool. Oh, yeah, there are tons of different ways to do this. But what we're looking at here is we're looking at a very easy way for somebody who has no photo manipulation experience, mm -hmm. right? And you'll see what is happening here is I'm clicking on points. I'm not using the, f the equivalent of a Photoshop drag, hold your mouse button, and hope beyond hopes that you actually get around the actual edge. What I'm doing here is completely different than what Photoshop's lasso tool go does because I'm clicking on basically points here. If I, whoops, I've clicked up there, 
what do I do, right? Now I can go up here and I can drag that oh, yeah. and move it to my proper point. This is not the equivalent of a Photoshop lasso where you're holding in that mouse and hoping beyond hopes that you're getting it within, you know, that you're tracing properly. Don't let someone tickle you on Photoshop because <laughs> you will or You're lose. done. Yeah. That's okay. funny. So here we go. Getting down to his legs here. This is good. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an image mask. And that's going to allow us to revert and manipulate this very, very easily. Here we go. And we're at the bottom of his photo. There's his leg. Okay. Scroll. There we go. Okay. So you'll see, look at all those points that I've created. Yeah, yeah. See the difference there? I can move any one of those points. I can mm. change them. I can do whatever I want. But what we'll do for now is I'm going to highlight everything up to that point. Okay. So now I've got this marquee that's like that. And I'm just doing this to expedite mm -hmm. the process for the viewers. I'm going to right click on my layer and I'm going to go add layer mask from selection and add that. So now what it's done is it's removed the portion that is outside of my highlighted marquee. Okay. So now the photo is starting to look like this. Cool. Right. So there he is sitting on a bench in this park and it looks pretty good. So now you're going to want to get in, you know, get into all of the different areas. I'm going to want to do the other side of his head, and I will do that, but I think that uh, we probably won't have time on the show. But I'll finish this before, and I will upload the XCF file so that you'll actually be able to yeah, see okay, yeah, how yeah. this is done. Yeah. Okay? Because I've already created a layer mask here, so what I can do is I can right-click on that mask, and I can go uh, mask to selection, and then I've got my selection back. Okay? So now I can resume where I left off. I could save that XCF and I can just use that mask as a selection now. And I can continue on. I can go here. I've, I quickly hit my shift key so that I'm adding to my marquee. See that? There we go. Around his ear. Notice I'm not zoomed in quite as close as I normally would be because you want the accuracy of a, a fairly close zoom. That's with my plus and minus keys on the keyboard. So what this is going to do for me is it's going to give me a copy of this photo that I can then put onto an SD card or something like that or a USB thumb drive, take it to the photo finishing lab, and print out a little 4x6 that I can put on my desk at work. And it's this great picture of my son <laughs> laughing. And it's going to look really, really nice, that I, and, and I'm so pleased that I'll be able to take this photo and use it for the entire year. Use it year round, and everyone will be yeah. like, "Oh, where'd you just go on vacation? Where's yeah. this picture taken?" And, like, and and you hope that you know it's not recognizable as like, <laughs> "Hey, there we are in the Grand Canyon." <laughs> you know, so you, you know when you choose your pictures wisely. But you can also, that similarly, you could use another photo that you have taken. Mm -hmm, that's I, true. I had contemplated going um, to Barry's waterfront, for example, and taking a picture of a park bench at the waterfront, but it's that time of year where it's it's just it's too snowy out mm -hmm. for the fact that he's not wearing a coat and hat so it just wouldn't make any sense yeah artistically so but in the summer you might consider doing that if it uh, if it's appropriate to the photo so let's see let's see what happens i'm almost you know at that point where we can get this done people in the chat room are saying put him on the great wall of china that works it's not really all that great. It's kind of the all right wall of China. <laughs> Rachel saying, I'm surprised you didn't put him on the Enterprise. Well, I already did that once. Okay. All right, so. Here we go. Going to finish off that marquee. I'm not sure where the top of my marquee is. There we go. Oh. But you, you guys get the idea. That's what we want to do. It's and then, sweet. Yeah, well, you know. It does look really good, actually. 
So then the, ne the next step, if I had removed all the other stuff there, because I kind of, I accidentally undid my marquee, oh. which is fine. I can redo it. But what you want to do now, okay, once I've got that tree out of there, right, is you're going to see that his legs only go that far. So it doesn't really work. Yeah. But you can crop the image there, uh. okay? And now, you know, if I do that, right, his feet come down there. Doesn't and it look. just looks like, yeah, yeah. you know, he's sitting on this bench. Just to, just to give you that basic idea, right? Cool. So, yeah, it can be pretty cool. And you can use that kind of technique for anything. I want, I want you to learn to use layer masks, though, instead of just cutting things out of your selection. Masks are very cool. As I said, you can, you can revert back to your selection right you can get your selection back you can remove the mask and watch what happens it puts everything back the way it was because you're not actually deleting anything from the photo it's very cool that is cool mm -hmm. so i can use this technique to uh change people's faces put put happy happy <laughs> brother in a family photo and take a you sure could angry yeah brother yeah didn't want to be there like i could <laughs> i could take a, a photo of each kid and put them all on this bench together yeah. even though they're three separate photos yeah, yeah. right which is kind of cool that you can do that yeah. and and do it in okay. such a way that is really quite realistic as long as you are you know, fairly accurate with your clicking. Mm -hmm. That's why we zoom in, yeah, yeah. right? And then the next step is just make sure your lighting is good. Like it, the photo of him is a little bit brighter than the photo of the bench. So mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll go into colors and use my levels to bring up the brightness just a little bit over here on the right. Bring down the shadows and then tweak the middle there so that it's a little closer uh. see so now all of a sudden it's a little bit closer in hue to the uh, to the photo of my son that's good right and then you might add some shadowing and things like that which you can do easily enough use your paintbrush and a, a nice little feathered brush for example create a new layer and just kind of yeah, what, yeah, like shadowing and stuff. What about, yeah. like... Just add some shadows, right? And then change that to, say, an overlay, right? So that it doesn't have that stark black. And, and you can lay that kind of stuff in. Right? Figure out what works and then give it a good, a good blur. There's so many different things that you can do. Oh, yeah. Quite amazing what you can do. Yeah. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you can find us online at www.category5.tv. Uh, we're just about out of time for tonight. It's hard to believe how quick the night always goes by. So here we are. crazy. Yeah. And if we didn't get to your question tonight, I know there are some questions that we're, we were unable to get to, um, but we will uh, review emails and, uh, you know, email us live at category5.tv. Um, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll hope to take care of you soon. We will. So, yeah. And also, I just wanna I just saw a little something something in the chat room mm -hmm. um, in regards to the postcards. Um, an individual said he's na his name's Harry, and about two shows ago, I sent in a picture of my island, which I forgot to say its name, and it's from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. So there's a, a postcard Very I guess good. that came in. So Barry's so. Bay was incorrect. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. It's from Puerto Rico. All right. <laughs> It's close. So, yeah, anyways, send your postcards. That's, that was a little bit of a segue. Send your postcards, because not only will we, we be, uh, blah, 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 not only will we identify you, <laughs> we will identify your home and native land. Yes. Bringing spotlight to the place in which you dwell. And it just is cool for us to get it. Yeah, we mostly just love snail mail. That's <laughs> basically what this comes down to. There's something to. about it, eh? Like, I it's just, awesome. you don't get it anymore. It's like, it's bills, and that's it, and... Robbie so, sent me a Christmas card in the mail. And even I though, insisted. I know. I was just like, oh, just, oh, I'll just pick it up. I'll just drop it off, whatever. He's like, no, I'm going to send it in the mail. And I loved it because I it, love snail mail. It's so much more fun. It's better. It's yeah. way better. So there you have it. 
So send us some snail mail. <laughs> not that your emailed photo of Puerto Rico was oh. not awesome. I'm not saying we, that. We love that too. We love the world. And we'd love to learn more about it Absolutely. in postcard form. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you'd like to know where our viewers are from, check out map.cat5.tv. Mm. Yes, do it. Now that the show's over, you can all hit it all at once. I, I won't mind. <laughs> won't slow us down or anything. <laughs> yes, it, it is won't pretty crash cool actually. Service. It's very cool. It's very cool. So, but uh, that's all the time that we have. Great to see you. Congratulations yes, again. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Back with my posse. Back, Back in the seat, hot yeah. seat. <laughs> see you next week. Bye bye. It'll be fun. Take care. Have a great week.